Oh hi guys and girls, Emma again, welcome back to the spare room. Been a while since I posted a proper video and I apologise for that, but here we go. Let's see what we can do. I've been working on this strange contraption, which is a thread cutting attachment uh, for the launch lathe. It's a bit of work in it and I thought, well, I've got some actual progress and we can have a bit of a look at at how it all works and I know there are a few people who are still a bit mystified about this particular system and and what all the bits do but um, let's see if we can correct that and get you something to watch and maybe some good ideas I hope and maybe some feedback on where to go next with it so this is my launch lathe. We'll, we'll start there. This lathe was made somewhere between the wars, probably fairly early on because the 2A variation sort of stopped being a thing um, well and truly by the Second World War. Uh, 2A being the size of the collets, which is the, the 12mm launch collet. They're really pretty thin on the ground and any accessories for this, which means that the, the spindle thread and the, the collet thread, any accessories for this are a bit hard to find, in particular this one. I've seen pictures of them. Um, I believe they made one, but I've never actually seen much video about it. A lot of other plane turning lathes like Shoblin and uh, the American lathes, Stark and Waltham and Elgin, Hardinge, all those had very similar systems. This bolts independently and free on the bed and we'll have a look at this system here in a little while. It's got a double, it's got a, a T-slot in the bottom here, which clamps up against the, the system, up against the, the attachment. So this is independent of this, it's not bolted together. So we could undo the bolt on this and move this along, and we've got freestanding system, and we might actually do that in a minute. This has got a a system of tumblers for forward and reverse. Uh, this is going to have a, a bought plunger, a nice bought plunger to go in here I decided. Something a bit comfortable and it's going to work and it's going to be reliable and isn't going to be a pain like the one on my dividing head. I'd like to put one on that as well maybe at some point. This is all adjustable for backlash and depth here, but I've got it so that this works nicely. If we start the lathe, that's running pretty nicely that direction. And this tumbler system, which has two gears. And when it's up in the top position, it when it's up in the top position, it runs through an intermediate. So this is just an idler. And when it's in the down position, it runs. When it's in the down position, it runs through just the one gear. So it runs in the opposite direction, like so. It's also got enough space in between for a neutral position, so that doesn't work at all, which is probably where it's going to spend most of its life. So I'll drill three holes and I'll put a plunger in here so that we can select the three gears. That'll be the next thing. This has a, what I call a banjo anyway, which has got some slots in it. This is still being prototyped out and working out right. But that'll be on there and it's at the same level as this plate through here, or it has to be. Um, uh, 
and we've made sliding pieces for gears on here so we can set up a, a gear train from here to here through to here and there will be a very similar system to we've got here with the, a nut and a key and the, enough space for two years so this is our drive gear and this is just one off the stack any gear will fit on here And there'll be another system here, the same as this, so we can put any gear on this end as well. And then we've got slotted holes to put in an adjustable slide so that we can put the rest of the train between. This will probably have a bronze bush in here, I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm sort of feeling needle rollers might be a better system, but I'm not sure they're going to last long either. Um, still thinking about that but it'll have a bush through here with a spigot sticking out that this hole here, this hole here will fit on and then a bolt through the bottom here with a lock a handle and a T-nut on here to clamp it in the right position. So that should clamp that nice and secure there at any point. So if we've got two big gears, we can put it further away We've got two small gears, we can put it further, close together. This gear here, well this spindle has a, a place for, for a grub screw. This is a draw bar for the collet. And we have a hole here for a grub screw and that lines up with this one which has got a nice round point on it to, or a nice point on it to fit in that hole and that goes on there like such locates in there so that's nice and secure This gear here needed to be moved back because I originally started with this plate here as 20 millimeters. So I've made it, well, we've made it 25 because that's what we had. So I've moved this gear along the required four millimeters or whatever it is on here. And I'm gonna do something a little bit better to fill up this space so it looks a bit neater. So it might make a, a, a ring to go on there the same diameter as this and shrink that on something like that. If we have a look at this system here, this is a sliding, I did make a sort of a couple of videos about this, but this, this has a sliding joint in it, and this clicks on here like this. We've got a spring detent in it. which holds this in place nicely on two grooves. We we'll come up here and have a bit, if we have a bit of a look at this, we've got plenty of clearance on the three jaw chuck. This is in past center, this tool. So we've got plenty of clearance here. On the four jaw, not so much. We'll have to think about that a little bit. But for collets and for three jaw work and for my Sherline chucks, it's excellent. The big 6 inch 4 jaw for thread cutting, it's excellent. Um, down to about 5 or 6 millimeters, and we've still got clearance here. This has a little knurl collar on here, and we can put that out of gear there. Uh, we can put that out of gear there and the dog clutch doesn't run that's that's the theory and part of this whole thing will be to have a stop on here that operates on here so that when this gets up to a certain thing it kicks it out for power feed so that's that's going to be 
part of the deal and whether I put a I had thought to put a micrometer head slide on here something like that I'm not sure um, not sure how we're going to do that probably what would be nice would be a, a captive shaft each end with a, a wheel with graduations on it in the line so that you can move this backwards and forwards but I'm not sure um, whether that's even necessary probably what it'll get is a rod with some sort of fairly quick action adjustment so that we can get to the end we can adjust this so it just pops out and then move it along not sure about that yet but that's how all that works it's it's always more complicated than you think I need at some point, and I'm just going to put a, a shaft through here, through this hole, um, with probably a grub screw, with housing with a grub screw, which will have the, the bigger diameter on this end to fit this on, and a, a boss on here, very similar to what we've got here, to... Um, to space this out and a bush or bearings inside there I've just got a bolt set up in there to hold to support the end of it now but probably a stop collar on the end to stop it moving backwards and forwards so it's a little bit adjustable and I'd like some sort of a quick release on here so that you can unplug this rather than have to undo the two grub screws and chowder it all up so we're still thinking about that too this should just come off very quickly and easily. And all this is designed to be operated with the Lorch Schmidt & Co spanner that I have. If we reach down the back and undo the bolt, then this will just slide out of the way and you can see that this is very much self-supporting <coughs> that's the back of it that's as solid as the rest of it that's pretty good fit on there I apologise for the bad lighting here, but it is a rainy, dark day, and I thought I'd leave it till this morning to to make a video so that we didn't end up with something that was unwatchable. But it's raining and miserable, and to be honest, we're, we're stuck with what we've got, so I'm going to make a video anyway. We turn that light off, but I'm not sure that's all that much better. So we've got a lever on here, which is basically just a, so we can adjust this up against the, when we pull that lever up, everything's nice and solid and straight. That's not moving. So I'm pretty pleased with that. If we just slide that off, that just slides off there. And we can see the T slot in the bottom there. And that operates with this T nut. Uh, doesn't require a whole lot of lift there um, you see it's only got probably one millimeter something like that but it all works nicely now let's go and open the bench and have a bit of a look at, at what we've got here in the bits anyway the lights a bit better over here 
Uh, if you watch my live videos, you'll probably have seen this to death. So I'm not going to give you a whole huge explanation about why I've done everything like this. But we're going to go through some of the main things that you have done. Uh, this tumbler system, you can see now that that this gear meshes with this one and this one meshes with this one so that when this works on this gear you've got an extra ratio so or an extra idler so that it runs in the opposite direction so that's how that works we sit this one here we've got this one goes this way this one goes this way and this one goes the same way as this one if we work it over here, this one goes this way, this one goes this way, this one goes this way, and this one goes the opposite way to this one does. So that's how the reverse works. This has a grub screw in the side here. If we undo that, we can slip this apart. This is all adjustable, so it's got a slide here to adjust this backwards and forwards. So the, these two are adjustable for backlash and for depth to some extent. This has an eccentric bush in it, uh, which has 10, 10 positions, 10 holes, and a grub screw that lines up in one of the holes there. So what happens is that we can adjust then um, the position of this basically this way and this way so we can find the low spot or the high spot and that gives us different depth this way too so it's all pretty adjustable this is another piece of mild steel that's bolted on here and this is threaded fine 10 millimeter for a proprietary plunger that is on its way. This plate was, um, this, this bush is just a short bush that's, that's actually, it's only just sitting there at the moment. I haven't glued it or loctited it in or anything and that's what I'm probably going to do with it. But that's just a short bush for a spacer. This system here um, this is offset 2.3, 2.4 degrees, something like that. So that the same as a tailstock, one side of it's, it's straight up and down, another one points out, it makes quite a nice handle. So it's a very close match to the tailstock on the lay. And this has got a little grub screw in here that stops this moving. If we have a look at this, it's got a cam on here. Like so. So it's offset one millimetre. And it's got a slot there for the grub screw. And this is just a, a press fit in here with a bit of Loctite. So that's how that works. This one here is just a plunger and I've heat treated this so there's a sort of maximum strength. I don't think there's going to be a problem with distortion here. It's very thin in here but it seems to work okay. So until it does. I've also case hardened this, this T-nut and what I would do differently is put a, a thread in the end of it and a nylon piece of thread, a nylon rod to give it sort of a an anti-slip feature so that it doesn't come unscrewed so you don't have to adjust it every time you fit it up. But I haven't done that, so whether that'll happen or not, I don't know. This plate was um, wire cut by Marcus Wilson, JB from Oz on YouTube. <clears throat> and it's EDM wire cut. It's really a pretty nice thing. It was very, very close to what fits the bed. I ended up milling this about, it took about 0.8 of a millimetre out of it all over 
so that this sat down properly. But apart from that, it's a pretty good fit. And I've just set this up and bored the holes in it. This bush I stuffed up, we're still gonna leave that to last. Um, getting this in the middle and on centre in my little mill is a little bit of a challenge. So I've rebushed this and um, it's not that far out. I just wanted the, the little, little, little bit at the front. So that, that bush is a good tight push, push fit and it's loctited in and then it's got a just in case there's any, any tape or anything in it. And it's got to be JB World in the top. This one here was very difficult to do. Um, this hole goes all the way through. As you can see, it's that long. And it did wander, so we ended up doing this with a with an end mill and then bushing each end. So it's a really nice job and that's probably how it should have been to start with. But I'm pleased with that. There needs to be some sort of a guarding system on it and that's still got to come as well. Um, this bush and pin and everything needs to be needs to be made and this piece needs to be cut out of 10 mil steel. There needs to be a, a locking screw for this to go in that spot. And this of course has these, which are my design. That's got a, a T-nut and a slot. This is all one piece all the way through. Like so. And then it's got a bush or a spigot. It goes on the other side of the plate. Like so. And then these have got Look, a bronze bush with a keyway in it, a key in it, and I've got spaces so you don't have to use gears. But we can put one gear on there. And one little spacer, which we're gonna to have to make again because they're not quite right. And if we need to, we can put a gear stack on them so we can put the second one on as well. And then when we screw this down, that tightens this up on the plate and gives us the right end plate for, for spinning gears. So we've got two of them made up. And that brings us to the gears, which is the other thing that still needs to be done. This is a complete set of gears. Um, probably won't use all of them, but it'd be nice to have them. From 80 teeth down to 20 teeth. There's a 21 tooth there for imperial gears. And then they're in five tooth increments. So 80, 75, 70, 65, 60, 65, 50, 55, 50 oh and so on anyway um, these are 3d printed I don't think they're going to stand up particularly long but at some point we need to either cut these out of phenolic sheet which would be sort of really nice or and probably the easiest if not the, the cleanest would be a messy way to do it or cut them out of aluminium which would be okay a bit of 8 mil aluminium sheet or buy them, and we can buy them, but we've got to buy 10 millimeter thick gears rather than 8 millimeter, which means that they've all got to be trimmed. And the ones that I saw, we don't have a clue what size internal hull is, so don't know how many of them you've got to bush and all that sort of stuff, especially the bigger ones. I think probably the smaller ones would be fine. But we do have a reamer for them and a, a brooch for the keyway, so it's not a big deal to do them but it's just gonna take some time. So that's another project. Anyway, I thought I'd, I'd share this update and get some sort of people to ask questions and try and answer most of those questions, uh, how it all works and, and what everything does.
this has probably rambled on for, for, for way too long. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, people. Um, and I'm going to put this all in a box and go on to something else for the rest of the weekend. So be kind to each other and more soon.